Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Boot Nerds podcast. My name is Jeff. Jay, what's going on? What's good, my man? Uh, it's going to be fun today because we are going to do our first, I think, part two. We're going to talk about more shirts today. It's going to be fantastic because we have been blessed with so many shirts for the new season. And uh, as you guys may have noticed uh, last time when we did part one, well, um, a lot of big shirts hadn't released, so uh, we're going to make it up to you, and we're going to talk about those uh, today. But before we get into it, make sure that you slap a like on the video if you have a good time. If you don't, well, maybe you shouldn't keep watching, and maybe if you slap a like on the video before you leave, we'll all be happy. You can also go and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do and you want to see what we, uh, what we throw out on a regular basis. And of course, don't forget to leave a question in the comment section right down below, which we might answer in future episodes. Uh, I think that is all. I think we're good. You can go if you want. If we miss a shirt that you think we should have rated, we probably yeah. rated it in part one. So the little pop up in the corner, you can click that and there should be a direct link to part one. Um, and also, if you're listening to the audio only version of this, if you go to the YouTube channel, there's actually pictures of all the shirts as we're talking about them. And we'll be rating all of those shirts from one to 10, 10 being the best, one being absolutely miserable. Exactly. So, um, and just to put it out that we haven't given a one yet, but I have a feeling that today <laughs> we might get very, very close. Uh, but let's start off uh, once again, alphabetically with... Arsenal. Um, now, uh, Arsenal have released their their new kits. Uh, they were one of the big clubs that people complained about. Why aren't the shirts in in the last episode? That's because they weren't released yet. Uh, but now they have been released, and uh, they released their new uh, home and away shirts. The home kit is uh, well, both kits are inspired by what the shirts looked like uh, back when Arsenal and Adidas were last uh, in a partnership. So back in the eighties, and uh, and I think it looks the home shirt. It's a great looking shirt, to be honest. White sleeves, like a, an Arsenal is supposed to, an Arsenal shirt is supposed to have, and and especially the pattern around the neck is is fantastic. Beautiful neckline. Yeah. So this is the first year making the switch from Puma to Adidas. I mean, it's an Arsenal shirt. Let's be real. Red down the middle, white sleeves. Um, Absolutely. And I, and I I understand the logic behind doing the collar that way, mm -hmm. but I have to say, while I think it looks fine. This is one of those shirts that would drive me absolutely insane to wear because I just don't like having that extended kind of like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a nylon elastic material that that's made mm -hmm. out of. And I just, yeah. it's very uncomfortable to me. And I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the way it looks, to be honest, on, on, on such the, a on modern streamlined shirt. Yeah, the collar. Okay, yeah. I know what you're saying. It's, it, I also like it more when it's low, but I think from a from a visual point of view, it's absolutely outstanding. I mean, it does it does find the balance between being modern, uh, new, fresh, but also it has that retro look that is so popular these days. So, so I think it really for me, it, especially as a United supporter, it's it's difficult to say this, but I actually think it hits the nail on the head. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's it's a, it's a clean kit. There's not too much to be mad about. I would give it seven out of 10. Seven and a half for me. Now, the away shirt is inspired by this infamous uh, Bruce Banana uh, away shirt that we also saw back in the day. Um, it, I mean, I think some people who are our age or maybe slightly older than me will remember Ian Wright donning this um like a boss. And they've also used him in the promotional material, of course. It is inspired by this uh, yellow um, Bruce Banana shirt. Uh, of course, it's been updated, so it looks a little bit more modern, but I'm, I'm feeling the retro vibes here, and I, I like it a lot. I wish I was an Arsenal supporter so I could wear this, because um, it's cool. I'm very into this. This I want this shirt. I, this, is, this is like the perfect amount of retro... Uh -huh. But I like it when they do the retro. It's not too much. It still has the modern cut. It still has a more modern collar. You have the Adidas stripes on the shoulders, which obviously the original would not have had. It's a great looking shirt. It's a pa it's a it's a yellow kit, which I don't typically like yellow, but they did this pattern in there. It's just it's just the right amount of subtle. I, I don't mm -hmm. like it when they do these crazy patterns and it's just 
kind of in your face. This is something that you don't really see until you're up close. From a distance, it looks like a solid yellow. It's mm-hmm. it's a great looking shirt. They have a good looking a- sponsor. It's a fantastic looking shirt. And, and you know, for me, it has those Nigeria vibes from last year, only a little bit more toned down. I, I, I'm, I'm really into this. Uh, yeah. For me, this is a this is a nine out of 10. I, I want to give this a near, per, this is like, it's a 9.5 for me. I really, wow. really like it. It's that wow. nice. The man is excited. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an internet first. <laughs> Josh is actually visibly excited. I like you're getting one. this. I'm a big fan. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We move on to AS Romo Way. Uh, kind of following the pattern from um, from the home shirt. Now it's a white shirt with uh, with the uh, with the burgundy and the the orange. Uh, kind of voltage or or um, lightning pattern down the down the middle. I like it. Solid shirt. Um, not completely taken aback by it, but I think it's uh, it's 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 a decent looker. Okay, all that excitement, it's 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 dropping. It's dropping significantly okay, from this okay. one. I, okay, first off, I don't really care for the diagonal slash look on any shirt. It's never right. been something I've been a huge fan of. And then they've okay. gone with this lightning theme. To me, this looks like if they decided that, hey, let's do some kind of a promotion to make like an AS Roma themed superhero. This is what they would have come up with. His costume would have looked like this, but they've made it into a shirt. It, it just, it looks like, I, I don't know. It looks like some weird knockoff Flash logo on the front of their shirt. I, I, I don't know what to say. I like the colors, like the combination of, of having a white base and then incorporating the orange and the maroon from the Roma home kit looks good, but uh, it's it's a little cheesy to me. So th- you're saying that this is what the AS Roma away shirt would look like if they were pulling a, um, a hottest field Paddy Power stunt. Sure. Why not? Okay, I, I'm 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 actually all right with it. I mean, I don't love it, but I think it's I think it's cool. For me, it's a six and a half out of ten. Oh, that's high. I'm gonna give it. It's not it's not un it's not so ugly that I wouldn't wear it, but it's not my favorite. It's a five out of ten for me. Jesus, he's back. <laughs> okay, moving on to Atletico Madrid. Uh, it's black. It's red. It's um simple. <laughs> it's very. I think it's I think it's rather stylish to be honest. I like the fact that they kept it all two toned. So black, red, boom, no no nonsense. Uh, for me, it it looks cool. The, the the simple template, I'm a fan. Yeah, really simple. It reminds me a little bit of the some of the PSG Jordan uh, Champions League kits, just black with a subtle accent color. Mm. Not yeah. not much to complain about here, but also not much in the way of design either. It's it's a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten, exactly. Then we move on to uh, the Barcelona away kit. Now, as you may remember, I was a big fan of, uh, and and still am, by the way, a big fan of the the Barcelona home shirt. Uh, A lot of people hate on it. I don't understand why. I think it's a very bold move. And uh, for those people who want a classic looking looking Barca shirt, uh, this is the one. Uh, It takes inspiration from a very... uh, um, Classic uh, old school Barcelona uh, shirt. The, uh, the the yellow isn't as volt. Um, on the old one, it's more like a, an, an orangey, warmer yellow. But I really like how they kept that um, the, the the color palette of Barcelona with the uh, with the red, the blue, and the and the yellow from the from so they have the red and the yellow from the flag and all that stuff it, it it's a cool looking shirt i know you hate the, the 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 sash going across the shirt but for me this is a this is one of the better looking away kits this year you know what you're right i did say that i don't like the diagonal slash but it actually you looks did, yeah. it looks okay on this one i have <sighs> i have to be honest um i like even on the sleeves how they mismatch the blue and the and the red on either mm. sleeve as the little trim accent. Mm-hmm. It, it, it It's solid. It's got, it's the right amount of retro. And I think that's the difference between this and the Roma kit. The Roma kit's like the diagonal slash, but they tried to make it look, I don't know, is that more modern to make it into a lightning bolt? I, I don't really know. This still no. looks old school enough to me, which is why I think it looks good. Because I think some of these old jerseys, they were so ugly that they're kind of cool again. Yeah. And this is like the <laughs> right mixture of those two things. Um. I think it's a seven and a half out of ten. I would give it a actually. I would go eight, eight and a half. Let's settle so, on an eight. 
Let's That's settle fair. on an eight. Okay, uh, Bayern Munich third shirt. Uh, should we do the away shirt first? Yes, let's do the away shirt first. Now, um, we kind of arrived at the conclusion that the home shirt from Bayern Munich was a bit bland. Uh, but I think, you know, bland doesn't even... It doesn't even... It's not enough to describe the away shirt because it's just white and, and gray and... I don't have much to say about it, to be honest. Really? You're not into this one? I like this a lot. I think it's the one of the most boring shirts I've ever seen in my life. It's it, okay. It reminds me of it's got a little bit of a Tetris vibe to it, but the blocks <laughs> really remind me of like an old Sonic the Hedgehog game. Like it looks like that's what's happening at the bottom of this shirt. Right. Um. I'm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I. I don't. I don't think it's ugly, per se. But I just don't. It doesn't get me excited at all. It's no, just, there's well, nothing okay. exciting about right. it. This is just a clean. Shirt. Do you happen to know what color shorts they're wear, they're gonna wear with this? A uh, most likely gray, I guess. As gray. To, is that would be interesting, right? Because a white, it, white, like it looks like this. White. This looks like it could be a Real Madrid shirt, obviously. Yeah. Like this could be a Real Madrid home, but we always see a white shirt with white shorts or or whatever contrasting color. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. a white shirt with like light gray shorts, I think would be an interesting look. I'd be curious to see the full kit, but. As a shirt, I, what I like about this is, yeah, okay, maybe it's not the most crazy design, but this is something that if you're a Bayern Munich fan and you don't want to wear this like bright red in your face shirt, this is very wearable. But that's the thing, the, the, the Bayern fans, they do want to wear the bright red. I mean, they have been up in arms as we talked about last time about, you know, uh, Bayern only using red and they are so happy that they, they dropped the blue and all that stuff. They want the red. I, I just... I wouldn't be excited as a Bayern fan about this. It's not a bad looking kit, but for me, it's a solid five because it's just a meh kit. See, I like this. I'm giving this, I appreciate the simplicity. It's done exactly right. I think it's a seven and a half out of 10. Wow, okay. Uh, third shirt is uh, in my book a lot better. It's navy and it has these like um, high danger orange um, uh, accents to it. Um, again, two tone shirt. I really like my two tone shirts, and uh, and I, I feel this is just a nice combination. It has it has a bit of a color pop, but but you know, dark blue and reddish colors always work well together. So so I would rate this at a seven and a half. Yeah, it's really good. I like. I think they it's cool because they did the the whole Byron crest and the stars in the same contrasting color. Mm, always looks good. Um, which looks great. I like the subtle little diamond pattern that you have within the blue. Yeah, it's um, great. So it's right? not just a solid blue shirt. Yeah. It it's it's nice. Um it's what did you rate it? Seven and a half. I I'm with you. Seven and a half out of ten. Solid. Okay, um, then we have what I would probably describe as the most uh, shocking shirt uh, uh, this season, at least. Because uh, we absolutely uh, roasted the Benfica shirt last time. Um, I, we didn't absolutely roast it, but it wasn't. we weren't impressed. Let's just put it like that. It was more or less the exact same shirt as they had two years ago. Um, and then <laughs> they seem to have listened because they made something very, very unique for the away shirt. It's some sort of gray and then with more or less the same uh, shade of red as they used on the buying kit. But for me, it's just, I mean, I can see where they wanted to go, but it's just so busy and it, it looks cheap. I'm sorry to say it, but it looks really, really, it looks like some sort of cheap China knockoff to me. I, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. See, this is, here's, this is, you could say this is like that Arsenal away shirt in terms of uh -huh. having like a very busy pattern. But the difference sure. is the Arsenal one has gone for that retro look, which people really like. This is trending more towards modern. Like this graphic reminds me of, you know, this, the like green on black script that you see in the Matrix movie. Mm -hmm. That's what this looks like to me as it's like, cause it's got, it's a pattern that has a little bit of movement to it. Yeah. Um, I, I think the crest looks great in black and red like that. I like the I agree. Adidas stripes going down the yes. side in red. I think yes. that's a cool accent. It's just that base pattern ends up looking a little bit cheap just because there's so much going on. Mm. But as a whole, I don't think that the kit actually looks that bad. Uh, as far as like modern designs go, this is, I th actually think is one of the better ones. Um, I would rate this a six and a half out of 10. I'm going to go three. I, I really don't like it. Yeah, I, I really, really don't like it. The only reason I won't go lower is because I think the color, 
the 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 the, the logo, the crest looks relatively okay, so I'm not gonna completely kill it, but I, I'm not. No. Yeah, it does. Moving it on. does have a training shirt vibe to it. Yeah, <laughs> and not a good looking training shirt. Moving on to uh, Chelsea way, which I think is it does everything the Bayern Munich shirt doesn't. It's simple. It's crisp it's elegant it has the color uh, you know nice little color pop there you know really love the trim on the arms for me it, it just it just matches well even the logo has been made to 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 fit in with the rest of the shirt i mean flipping awesome it's, very it's, very crisp yeah it's really nice again super simple i like mm. i like the they can do the fold over collar, but it's got to be a small one. When they do the big one, I, I think it looks a little bit clumsy. The small one looks really, really clean. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a really nice shirt. Great looking sponsor. Mm -hmm. This is an eight and a half out of 10. I agree, eight and a half. Then we move on to <laughs> <laughs> FC St. Pauli, uh, which is this uh, infamous team from Hamburg, which... Uh, it, it, there might be a risk that you don't know it, but it's like this cold team in Europe, and uh, and they always they've always had these like super weird shirts, and and the last many couple of years, as far as I remember back, they've had the brown shirts, and and this is not just any kind of brown; it's just like really brown brown, and I, I don't know what this reminds you of, but I, <laughs> it's it is okay. Here's my. The concept of a brown kit is strange, no doubt. It's got a very modern cut to it, like the way that they've segmented the the shoulders and thing. It actually reminds True. me a little bit of Atletico Madrid, right? Uh, no, sorry, no, Atletico Bilbao. No, it reminds me of. I don't remember. It was probably like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Chelsea had an Adidas kit that right. had the same kind of breakup like that. But they've gone with this very modern design, but then they have a little button on the collar, which just doesn't match. <laughs> I just thought that was weird because when you have a button, typically you're going for something that has a little bit more of a retro vibe. Mm. It's it's a it's an interesting shirt. I don't know. I, I can't say it's great looking. But would you wear it? Would I That's wear the it? Thing. I, you know what? It's it's so ugly. It's almost cool, but it's not <laughs> a good looking shirt. <laughs> no. So. With that I'm, in mind, I'm, I'm at four. I, I was gonna say four out of ten. I think is a fair Sorry. rating for this. Sorry, San Pauli. It really tries to be ugly, cool, but it just it's just ugly. Right, uh, Girondin de Bordeaux, uh, home shirt. I maybe said it the wrong way. I don't speak French, but uh, Bordeaux. It's it's a classic Bordeaux shirt, but with a little bit of a lighter uh, navy blue to it. A uh, really thin stripe going across the um, or, or, or uh, V, whatever they call it. It's a chevron, as you guys say in That's English. That's it. Um, I, I think it just looks stylish. It has it has the you know it looks like a Bordeaux kit shirt, but with a really uh, subtle, elegant, and very minimalistic vibe. I, I I love it. For me, this is a seven and a half. Yeah, this is a really nice shirt. It's super clean. No sponsor looks great. Having the having the logo and the crest centered is something we don't see very much anymore at all. So mm -hmm. that kind of makes it different from everything else. The white on the shoulders, I think, looks great. It, yeah, it's it's for me. This is a seven and a half out of ten. It's it's the right amount of retro. Exactly. Right, moving on to uh, the next kit here is uh, the Inter Milan away shirt. Now, as you may remember, I uh, I have a lot of love for the Inter Milan home shirt. Um, and and the same thing actually applies for the away shirt. I think this is the best looking away shirt we have this year. This, this uh, peppermint green or whatever you would call it. You know the little the little hints accents of gold. It goes well with the black. The sponsor is beautiful. It's clean. It's modern. It's it's hype. It's it's everything you want it to be. Like stand up and take my money. It's fantastic. Yeah, I agree. It's a really good looking shirt. There's there's something to be said about if you're gonna do an away shirt with this very bold color, which they've done here, you have to maintain a level of simplicity. Mm. I think just doing a little design on the collar and a little design on the end of the sleeves, like they've done, it it ties everything together. You wouldn't think like a mint green color, kind of like a blue and gold would work well, but it actually mm. works really, really nicely. Pirelli, probably the best looking sponsor in the game. Absolutely. It, it's a good looking shirt. It's, it's, a, it's a nine and a half out of 10. 
I'm on 10 out of 10 again. 10 out of 10. Nice. 10 out of 10. It's it's actually that good. For me, this is this is perfect. I would definitely rock. Right. Then we move on to another shirt I would definitely rock. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs home and away. Let's start off with the home shirt. Uh, now, the Kaiser Chiefs have always been known for having these kind of uh, really bold, uh, very graphical designs. Uh, but I feel that this year they've, they've kind of taken it a bit further with Nike um, and have this very like hypnotizing almost um, pattern uh, that, that is, it's, it's really difficult to kind of actually nail down what it is, but it just really catches my eye. The fact that they have black sleeves and this, this texturized pattern going on, you know, it pops, but still it looks stylish because black and yellow has always gone well. You know, there's even a song called Black and Yellow. I mean, everyone gets it, right? Yeah, it's a very, I mean, it's an optical illusion on the front of your chest. And it's kind of cool because I didn't really pick up on it until I just stared at it for the last 20 seconds while you were talking, but it kind of spirals into the logo. Yeah. Which which is kind of a pretty cool effect, but it's weird because the shirt in this picture is clearly laid flat across the chest, but it uh-huh. almost looks like it's being bunched up just because of how the pattern works. Exactly. And the, the cool thing about the, the thing spiraling into the logo is that the logo itself has this kind of pattern because of the of the chieftain's, um, I don't know what you call it, his the, like, Indian, feather Indian thingy, hat. Yeah, yeah, feather hat. Yeah, feather I don't know what that's called. YouTube help us. But anyway, <laughs> it's it's kind of the same texture, right? So uh so so fantastic looking shirt, black and yellow, uh Vodacom, the old Vodafone sponsor doesn't look the best, I think, for this kind of shirt. But I'm able to uh, I'm able to see through it. Uh what where are we? Oof. See, I think it's cool, but I don't think it's a great looking kit. I I'm I'm a six and a half out of ten. I can't go higher than that. Wow, I'm a nine. You're a nine. Oh, okay. I'm a nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, if, if we're talking about just the unique scale, it's a 10 out of 10. Yeah. But visually, I don't, I don't know. But I actually I almost think feel like, I almost feel like the sleeve shouldn't be black. Really? Yeah. I think this is one for the hipsters, to be honest. It is. Yeah. Which, and I like to believe that I'm a bit of a, you know, hipster. So, but it's cool. I do like that they, they went for something like this because this is like one of those shirts you'll buy and there'll probably never be another one like it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and what's even cooler is how they then took that pattern and took the same concept and actually also included that in the away shirt. It's white, but then it has the, the black and yellow sleeves with, you know, you get the feeling of the same pattern there. Um, the Vodacom sponsor looks a little better. I think it's it's very cool. It's very clean, but still has that hipster nice niceness vibe to it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I would probably go seven and a half for this. Yeah, see, I like this it's a lot. Not that, I mean, it's not that crazy. No, but this looks a lot better to me. I just really I, I like this a lot more. This this to me is, wow. is an eight out of ten. I really like okay. it. Okay. Okay. Well, we can we can then buy the shirts uh as a team and you can you can take the away kit. I take the home shirt. Cool. You got no it. Okay, yeah. we move on to Liverpool third shirt. And um again, as much as it pains me to say, I actually think it's cool. It's black and then it has this like baby light mintish blue. Um, as as an accent color, a little block on the on the sleeves, like we see on the home shirt, and then this very interesting, almost like chain pattern on the um, on on the chest. That that I gotta say, it actually looks pretty cool. See, it actually look at, looks again, cool. not to bring up the Arsenal kid, but what they've done is they've tried to combine retro and modern. Uh-huh. But the cut of the at right at the top of the chest, having the shoulders in a solid color, and then it 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 makes the shirt look too blocky because of this busy pattern. I think. See, I actually think f- f- that makes the shirt cool because this it's so busy on the body, and then the the shoulders are free and clean. And I I really like how it breaks it up. I, I, at least I think it looks stylish. Yeah, no, I don't think it looks bad, but I think it would have looked better had the pattern continued up over the shoulders. You just had really? the collar solid blue and then leaves the, leave the sleeve solid as well. Uh-huh. I, I just think that the upper chest being a solid color, it, it I don't know, it gives, it gives, it makes you look like a, like a rectangle. I don't know. It's just, it's too blocky for me. But, but I do like good, the pattern That's good the for me, but that is, my man, it's because you are basically shaped like a rectangle because you're, so, <laughs> I mean, it would be good for me. Just like, I'm going to look all buff and stuff. 
I, I, I like it. For me, this is a, this is an eight out of ten. I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that. I think eight out of ten is a fair score because I really do like oh. it. Yeah. Manchester. So, so Manchester City were one of those teams that just decided, okay, hell, we're just going to release everything at once. <laughs> Here are our kits. Uh, again, so they released a, a, a major home. kit supplier change with them. Yeah, yeah, and, and which is which is also very interesting. Like they said goodbye to Nike, which they've only been with for like eight years, right? Yeah, uh, hasn't been that long. Yeah, um, going into Puma. We, I mean, Puma are going places, so so it's 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 fun to see. I think the away, uh, sorry, home shirt, um, it, it looks like you would expect, but then it has this obnoxious purple color on the on the on the sleeve, and I don't know what on earth is up with that, and I'm not particularly fond of it. I've always thought that the city kids that, that Nike did that have been relatively simple have looked. And I'm 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 not gonna I've never said this, but they actually look relatively good. This just looks like a bad attempt of trying to be retro to me. Mm. And I'm not into it. So the accent in purple, you would rather it be white? Or black. But or yeah, black. Preferably white. I think that would have looked kind of cool. Yeah, you're you're right in saying that they've gone for something different. I think I probably would have done the collar in white on this shirt. I think that would mm -hmm. have made it look, would have given it that little bit more. But I do like sure. the very subtle pattern. It's, it's almost the wavy pattern from the Puma 1 19.1 yes. in the toe yeah. box. It's that yeah. same pattern, which I like because uh -huh. it's just a subtle thing and it keeps it from just being a basic blue shirt. Absolutely. Um, I, I disagree with you. I think it looks good. I, I'm, I'm not mad at it at all. I think it is a, I mean, it's, it's basic, but it's got that little, I think the pattern just bumps it up a little bit. It's a seven and a half out of 10. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm six. Six. Okay. City Away, on the other hand, I feel is very cool. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit jealous on that because, uh, that, that is a fine shirt. There's a lot going on, a lot of different elements, but but I feel that they incorporate a lot of cool things. So black, again, yellow always looks good. A little reference on one of the stripes on one sleeve uh, to the worker bee of Manchester, which is always nice. Uh, then they have pink and blue on the... on. I'm, I'm not really sure what the pink is all about, but but there's just, you know, it's playful in a, in a simple, stylish, very crisp, almost a little bit hipster way. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm I'm feeling it despite it being a city shirt. Yeah, I, I I don't dislike it. I'm trying to decode what the pink is all about, and I'm thinking because we're about to talk about the third shirt, it has that same pink color. So I think this is their way of tying the home shirt and the third shirt into the away shirt as one. It's my only guess. Otherwise, it makes no sense to have a pink logo and a pink or, sleeve, orangey or whatever kind of. Yeah, but it it's definitely different. I. Is it just three stripes on the shoulder? It's kind of strange, mm, no, for a Puma kit? Would probably be a little more than three stripes because some other German company might come in and say, yo, guys, you can't do that. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. But it, it's nice. I mean, it's a little, it almost looks like if they offered like a customize your own kit service and they allowed people to make stuff. This is like stuff yeah. that people would make, but they're actually making it themselves. It's I a nice it's cool. kit. I, I think it's yeah. a, I think it's a seven out of ten. I'm on I'm on eight actually. I like it. Really? Uh, the uh, the third shirt, on the other hand, I understand where they're going. Uh, it's it's basically making me think of a tequila sunrise drink, and we've kind of seen this design on on Barcelona away shirts uh, previously uh, many years ago. I'm, it's never going to be pretty in my eyes, but it kind of also works. Uh, I'm I'm on a I'm on a six and a half, seven ish, six and a half. It's yeah, all right. it's it's a nice. Right. I like the fade, I, the color combo. While it looks good together, is not my favorite. I think the black accent is nice. It kind of ties it in pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I would have done the I would have done the Manchester City logo in in a black and white, and I think that would have looked a lot better. Would have been better, yeah, because it just it looks kind of I don't want to say out of place, but it just the colors don't go with anything else. It should it should have been monotone. That, that yeah, uh, just just completely black, right? Yeah, I agree. I think that would have looked better. It's a yeah, it's a six and a half out of ten. Right. Then we move on to uh, to the to the to the right side of Manchester, right? Uh, Manchester United away. Which is, um, it's, um, 
it's interesting. I'm I'm really struggling to kind of nail down this color uh, and which kind of animal print it is, but uh, it, it's definitely um, it's it's special. It's something else. <laughs> it's you know what I like it. I'd be curious to see it in person because I think it's it's hard to tell if this is more like a light brown. Like a tan color. It's or more. It's, I've seen it in person, and it's more. Uh, it's more gold. It's, it's more so gold. It to, yeah, it has Which a slightly gold vibe to it. Is better. I think the gold is better. Yeah. I, the pattern is like snakeskin slash giraffe slash leopard. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little strange, but it's got it's the right amount of retro, but it also has this kind of like luxury type print to it. Like that's what it. It almost seems like that would be on a really expensive purse or something. Yeah. I don't know. And I think something else that this shirt has going for it versus a lot of other United shirts is that the color actually looks good with the Chevy logo. Mm. Cause that is the one thing about so many United shirts is they have this great design and the Chevy logo just looks like this giant everything. brick that they've put in the middle and it ruins it. Yeah. So it, I think it works really nice. I like the black accent. This is a nice shirt to me. I'm giving I, this I, an eight and a half out of 10. I'm going to say that from afar, and when you don't get close to it, I actually think it looks amazing, and I would be on an eight and a half. Uh, but when you get close, I'm not a big fan of animal print, so I'm, I'm going to drag it down to, uh, to a seven and a half, simply because of the print. It's a personal preference, but I will give you that it's, it's a very, it's a cool looking shirt when you don't see the texture. Yeah, okay, fair. Then we, uh, we go to France again. PSG home shirt. <sighs> See, see, I'm actually, I, w- I was going to say that if they had kept Fly Emirates as a sponsor, we would be in the, in the really, really high regions right here because it's a beautiful looking shirt. Going yes. back in time to, to the old, uh, really old PSG shirts. I remember those that had RTL on the, on the, on the chest. Very, very cool. But for me, the, the new sponsor, the Accor Live Limitless, whatever that is, some sort of hotel chains, something, something. I, I'm just not feeling it. it. It makes the shirt a bit too busy. And if they'd kept it out, we would be talking about a top, top score here. I 100% agree with you. With Fly Emirates as the sponsor, this is like a nine and a half out of 10. It's really nice. Mm. Not a lot going on, but exactly what you want from a PSG kit. The sponsor, however, is just, there's no way around it. It's ugly. It is not a good looking sponsor <laughs> yeah. at all. It's too big. They must have paid a lot of money to get that. Because that's a huge, like, look how giant the breakup in the stripe is. That's yeah, it's that's a good quarter of the shirt. It's not. It's not good. It's not. Yeah. Really good is it? Yeah. It's, and it, and it's, it's a shame because because you know the colors are beautiful, and and the design is clean and crisp and and I think it's very elegant. But it it takes it down to a seven and a half for me. It's a nice shirt, but it could be so much nicer. Yeah, it, it's a six and a half for me. Wow, you really hate that sponsor. I don't like the sponsor. You know what? Maybe see the gold logo at the bottom, the Nike crest for the authentic badge. You think if they had the logo in gold, it would have looked good? Yeah, I know what you're saying. We have also discussed this internally uh, at Unisport, actually. And and we all agreed this. Yeah, most of us have agreed the same um, funny thing. I don't know. (laughs) I'm just wondering if there's a different way of doing the logo that would look better. But I don't know. It's not my call. No, at the end of the day, money talks, right? <laughs> and PSG sure have a lot of that right now. So yeah, especially if they make a big sale. But 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 speaking about getting a logo in gold on a on a on a dark blue navy shirt, well, uh, you only need to look at the Real Madrid away shirt to to get that. Uh, again, just like on the United shirt, you have a, a relatively uh, clean, simple shirt until you get up close and you can see the texture. This is navy. It's uh, gold. It, it's like almost this gold coin, light gold. Um, uh, has this light gold shade to it. Uh, I think it's very nice. Again, I'm not super a big fan of this very detailed texturing on it. Not my kind of thing. But but I think as a whole, from afar, it looks really cool. It has some. It brings a bit of life to the shirt. The texture. Uh, yeah, I, like I think it. the texture. Yeah, otherwise it's just a blue shirt with gold accents, which would look good. No doubt about that. But I, it's cool. It's got this. It's like a it's like a mix of camouflage and almost like a flowing water type look is the best way for me to describe it. The gold accent for the logo, the crest and the sponsor on the front is really nice. 
Uh, and then they kept everything simple. They didn't go with gold D stripes, which they could have done. And I, mm. I would, I kept don't think black. that would have looked bad. Yeah. But they really made the focus, the three things on the front of the shirt, which is nice because the pattern I think is, it stands out, but it's just subtle enough. It's a really nice shirt. I think this is an eight out of 10. I would agree with you. And it reminds me a little bit of uh, the, the uh, a toned down version of the EA Sports shirts that uh, that Adidas did that were just outrageous and not very pretty. But uh, but but this this has the kind of the same feel to it, just way nicer. Yeah. Right, we're moving to uh, Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, they also have a new uh, home and away kit. The home kit is white. It has a navy trim around the neckline and uh, it has a navy uh, away shirt. The home shirt for me is super boring. I would say very, very, very uninspiring. It's clean, but five and a half. Yeah, it's it's pretty as straightforward as it gets. I would have continued the navy all the way around rather than just on the front. It's, <laughs> I know it's just a white shirt with a blue collar, but it's got a little bit of like a, like a pajamas vibe to it to me. I don't know why. <laughs> and I, I like, it's I like, nice. I like how it's just a white clean shirt again after the whole, uh, you know, everyone going with gradients last year, but it's just, it's a little hey, bit. Right. It, there's not enough. Like if you compare this to that Chelsea away shirt in all mm. white. That just had the right amount of accents, you know? This exactly, is just yeah. too plain almost. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, I mean, it's what you expect. It's a six and a half out of 10. Okay, fair enough. The away shirt, on the other hand, is also navy, but then has these purple, uh, this purple texture on on the top part of the chest. And I know you you talk a lot about your blocks. Uh, what do you feel about this one then? I like this. This is like, uh, reminds me of like a checkered flag. I think this looks good. I, it's different. I know you're not you're not into the purples clearly, but uh, I don't mind this. Right, I I also <laughs> don't mind it. I just don't think it's spectacular. Uh, for me, it's a six and a half. Six, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm with you with that. Six and a half out of ten is fair. I'd be curious to see what this would look like if they did that pattern on the sleeves rather than on the chest. Probably a lot better. I think and if they'd nice. done it in maybe a lighter or a darker shade of that, um, or the, the same hue, basically the same color, just just so it's a more like tone in tone pattern instead of a mm. completely different color. But yeah. that's how it goes. Then we move on to Valencia, which is also a white shirt, funnily enough. But this for me is actually, although it's not completely jaw dropping, it's better than the Spurs shirt because again, there's something on it to spice it up a little bit, which a plain white shirt needs. Um, orange neckline, uh, this black stripe on 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 the sleeves, like Puma are doing for their template. Uh, solid. Um, it's it is what it is. Six out of ten. Yeah, it's, it's very simple, but it looks good. It reminds me of the Real Madrid kit. Was it the first year or the second year Cristiano Ronaldo went to Real Madrid? They had an orange collar one year, no? Am I, yeah. am I wrong? I think you're right. Something like that. But it yeah. looks it looks really good. I agree. It's I, it's, it's simple. It's a, it's a 7 out of 10. Right. Now, then we move to Germany because uh, the last two clubs we have here are, are German clubs. The first one is Werder Bremen, which uh, which has this um, umbro design shirt that is obviously green and it's just green. But for me, the, the trim that, that the umbro shirts uh, they, they use and how they, they cut their sleeves and, you know, it, it just it just has this like reference back in time to... To to and, and brings out the umbro sartorial pride. I, I feel this this has a nice cut. It has a nice style to it. Um, it's not a, a stormer of a shirt, but I think it looks very very cool. And I'd be happy oh, to wear I, that. You're right in saying that umbro is pretty underrated in regards to their kits, especially the materials they use. They use some pretty nice stuff. It Absolutely. also looks to me like this has a very very subtle pinstripe. Yep, I was gonna like a green I was gonna on get green. Into that. It looks good. I like the collar, how it kind of like pinches at the very front. That looks really good. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice shirt. For just being solid green with some subtle white accents, you can't really do much better than that. No. Eight out of ten for me. I'm with you. Eight out of ten is a fair score. So the last shirt here is uh, Wolfsburg, um, which is 
probably a shirt that's gonna, you know, divide opinion a little bit. It's black, and then it has this X whatever gradient pattern on the on the front. Um, I don't know. Wow, what it's supposed to look like, but it's uh, it's definitely different, and and we're talking hyper 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 modern here. I, I, I'm almost thinking, uh, you know, like beginning, uh, you know, two thousand two thousand and one vibes here. You know, it, it's 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 special. But what it's, do we feel? Is it is it's, it good special or bad special? It's bad special. It's it's brutal. <laughs> it, Especially with maybe with a sponsor, it would look a lot better. But with no sponsor like this, oh my god, it's I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of this for me. I think it's gonna look way better with a sponsor, uh, which would actually take it up to be decent special. But but right now, I'm in the in the bad special, um category and i would actually go as far as saying this looks like a bad cheap training shirt oh, um just... so i would i would actually go down to to a three and a half. Oh yeah i was gonna say two out of ten you know what it reminds me of i was i'm trying to think because i'm like there's a shirt i've seen a shirt like this before chelsea had i don't remember if it was the away or the third but it was black and yellow and it right had i remember very kind of transformers graphic on the front I mean, obviously, this is a lot different than that pattern, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. This is when they had the, uh, yeah, when they had almost like the, the beginning of an X running down the shoulders and then like yeah. three lines going down, uh, highlighting the apps, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that was it's a just, lot better looking. Yeah, this is just a shape. It's. It's just a design and a shape that just does not go with anything. I, yeah. It's it just like they slapped it on the front and like, okay, let's call it a day. I don't know. Yeah. They didn't have they didn't have much time until they had to go out and get their Friday beer. So they were just like, yep, yeah, this is what we do. I found a pattern, guys. <laughs> it's Friday. Like, like Friday. I feel like I feel like they went on Google and they searched green XPNG. And then they just <laughs> whatever the first result was, they dragged it over top of a black shirt and they went home. Yeah. So, so to keep it in that note, this is the Rebecca Black of, of this year's shirts. Yeah, it's not good. Two out of ten. Wow. Jeez. Okay. So that kind of rounds up uh, this year's uh, shirt launch uh, madness. I, if there are shirts that you feel we've forgotten, both in part one and part two, you should let us know uh, in the comment section right down below. We may get out to you with a rating. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, remember that if you're feeling any of these shirts, could be the good ones, could be the bad ones, uh, you can find all of them at unisportstore.com, your favorite neighborhood boot and shirt pusher. And uh, you can find the link in the description, shameless plug. And with that over, Josh, I think we have a bit of time, yes, to move yeah, into some questions. You know what? That Wolfsburg shirt could be the official Unisport sh shirt as well. Oh, shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> Right colors. It's um, sadly, the I'm just right saying. Colors, I just yeah. wanted to throw that out there. That's all. I, I'd like to think we have a bit more style than that. We, we, you can do something better with those colors. I'd Come say. on, imagine, imagine we're walking out onto the pitch with that shirt with with the Puma City Pack Puma ones on. My God, you'd be so cool. So cool, man. Okay, well, okay, wait. I have a question for you. Would you rather you got you're trying out for a brand new team? Would you rather go wearing Either a Messi or a Ronaldo. Let's just say a Ronaldo shirt. You got to wear a Ronaldo shirt. Uh huh. Portugal, uh -huh. red, super mm. bright, super yeah. obnoxious. Yeah. Or that shirt. That shirt. Really? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm. I mean, as a as a thirty year on old man, I'm not gonna gonna rock up to a new team in in a in a Ronaldo shirt. I love the man, but but. Come on. No, 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 no. This is so ugly that it could be kind of cool. If you, if you, if you, if you mix and match well, you can actually make it kind of cool because it's just so obnoxiously ugly. It looks, it really looks like something for like really little kids. It doesn't look like an adult would wear that, but. No. It could be, it, it could be in the uh, ugly cool camp, but I think so far it's just ugly. But I mean, I'm also old and my style is something sometimes oh, a little. 
But really Josh, save the best for last. to the questions. Uh, do you want to go first? I have some questions. You have some questions. Yeah, I can. can uh, I can pull a question up. All right. Uh, what merc? This is asked by Superfly three six two eight. What mercurial hmm. had the best array of colorways? For me, the Vapor Four had only great colorways. What do you guys think? Vapor Four had a lot of great colorways. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of a bad one actually. Uh, no, there weren't any bad ones. No. I, Vapor 3 as well. It's pretty good. Uh, mm. You know what? Looking back, though, is the Vapor 3, did it really have that many good colorways? It had a lot of good colorways. But but there were some, like, I know a lot of people, maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I was never oh, a it huge will be. fan of Oh, it will the, be. Watch out. Watch remember, what was the, was it called Zinc? The, like, bronzy light gold with the orange heel. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. You like those? I, oh, I've never I liked them. those. If anyone if anyone out there has a pair in size uh, US 7, I will be a happy taker. I love them. Yeah, I was never a huge fan of those. Like, I loved the launch color, the white, the white with the gold heel and the little black swoosh. That looked great. All the R9 ones were really nice. Um, Vapor 1s and 2s also... Gray, the also gray one with the yellow heel, I didn't care for those. No, those weren't no. that great. Vapor ones and twos, I'm also just saying great colors. Uh, it started to go downhill from the Vapor 5, I feel. But that was also because it was an ugly boot. No, f 5, 6, and 7, didn't. I was never a huge fan of the designs. No. There were some good colorways in that, but... Vapor 4 is a good shout. It yeah, also had some standout Vapor colors. 4. But but for yeah. me, you know, nothing will beat the, you know, either the Vapor 1 or the 2s because of the orange uh, Vapor 1 or the gold Vapor 2s. Really? You think one boot defines the entire run of colorways? That's no, no, but you? they had they had solid colorways throughout and, and they just had these standout colorways. For me, Vapor 4, okay, fair enough. The pine green ones were also fantastic. Uh, navy uh, green ones... Uh, red gold SLs, yeah, okay, they, they had some good ones. A Vapor Four is just they they that is the first generation of a football boot that had tons of colorways, and every single one did not disappoint. Yeah, for true. me, I think the best one, most one of the most underrated colorways ever was the Euro. That whole Euro two thousand was it two thousand six eight eight, eight. two thousand eight pack the broad the the dark brown with yeah. the like light blue sole. Mm, Those amazing. just looked incredible. Amazing. It's just a shame they made the materials in this uh, folks leather instead of actual leather. It was a yeah. Shame. yeah. And, and also one of the, you know, the SLs from that pack were, are absolutely impossible to come by. They never sold them, so they're only made for, you know, pro player issue. Uh, as collectors will, will tell you, they're, they're a nightmare to get your hands yeah. on. Yeah. That's one of the boots that I would really like to have. So exactly. if you're watching this and you by chance have a pair of Euro <laughs> Vapor 4s, either the regular ones or the SLs, let me know. Or if you have the T90 Laser 2 in Kang Leather that didn't actually release to the public, let me know as well. I'd like a pair of those. Thank you. This is turning into the Jay and Josh's uh, Please Sell Us Stuff show. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, um, let's take a, another question here. We stay in the mercurial realm from E. Olive. Best slim-fitting non-mercurial boot? Great question. What would you say? Hmm. I have two, I have two. Give me two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Mizuno Morelli Neo 2, the most obvious That's choice in the world because That's it's super answer. slim, very, very slim, and a great flipping, sorry, fucking boot. It's, it's an amazing football boot. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but probably the best buy you'll ever make when it comes to quality and 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 longevity and and personal fit. Uh, there's also the Lotto Solista 200, which is a steal at uh, 80 euros right now on unisportstore.com. Uh, it, it has that really proper, lightweight, very tight-fitting, low-profile speed boot vibe that we remember from the Vapor ones. Uh, so those two would really be very high on my list. Furon 5s could also be an option. Really? Nah, it's not slim-fitting enough. Nah. Not too slim. Uh, uh, yeah, I think those are the two. For sure, the Neo. I think you could maybe give a shout to like the Puma King Platinum as a nice kind of slim, low profile mm -hmm. fit shape yeah, to it. You. Yeah. If you want something that's kind of leather all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to be fair, even the Phantom Venom, I think, is not, it's not super slim, but I think you can get away with it, no? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a slim foot, and I feel there is a little bit too much room in the midfoot for my taste. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's, it's up to personal preference. It depends on how slim of a foot you have. I'm, I'm very extreme. Okay, what about, we can't, we're going to get called out for not mentioning any Adidas boot. What What is the slimmest Adidas boot according to See, the to thing you? is that that the, the, the Adidas boots aren't exactly slim these days. They're all built on a relatively, I would say, moderately wide last. I would probably go for the Nemesis. But again, even wide-footed people can can squeeze their foot into a Nemesis. So, I, I, I don't, I mean, maybe even the Copa. Copa upper is actually relatively slim fitting. It's just the, the outsole that, that, that gives a little bit of room. So Copa or Nemesis? Okay. Copa? I just wanted to have that out there so people didn't yell at us. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. In all cabinets and stuff, we don't want that. One more, yes. Uh, do you have a good one or should I take um, one? Um... Oh, 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 me, me, you me. One? Okay, uh, you if you could go back in time and take credit for a modern boot tech you created, which would you choose and why? That could be ACC, I know what you're going to take, uh, Laceless, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, ACC is, an, is, is a good one. Like, I hope that guy, whoever came up with that at Nike internally, I hope... I hope you're able to retire for life and just who wouldn't want that sit on their at resume home and and watch that because yeah, that yeah. that was a brilliant idea. Yes. Um man, it, I think it'd be cool to be responsible for the OG Copa, no? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. Right? Forget about forget about like I don't I don't know that cuz I I think so, like so, I think the obvious answer would be like all oh, the sock boot knitted uppers, right? Yeah. That would be the obvious answer right now. I, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say, whoever thought of turning a track spike into a football boot with the first material is a flipping genius. Yeah. Uh, whoever is behind KNG one hundred, which is the which is the, the 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 synthetic leather on that first material R nine boot, is a genius and and in many ways changed the game. Uh, but but that's going back a, a while. Of course, Craig Johnston, predator technology. I mean. I was, I was just going to say that the original predator, like yeah. just think about the prototypes that they would have made to come to that final product. That had to be the craziest process. They just need to do a whole documentary on the development of that. They, that yeah, they did. They did. They did. Yeah. Oh. You can find it on YouTube. It's a, it's a good one, but it's very 1994. And there's this guy running around with like a, a, a big blonde fro and, and the shorts are ridiculous. There's a lot of man thigh if, if you're into that stuff. <laughs> so uh, so I think with uh, those uh, unpleasant thoughts in our mind, <clears throat> we should uh, we should conclude this uh, episode of uh, another fantastic episode of the Boot Nerds podcast. Uh, if you want to listen to uh, more, watch more, you can go and do that because there are 28 at, at this present time uh, episodes more of the Boot Nerds podcast. All you have to do is to click somewhere out there on YouTube or find it in uh, somewhere on your screen right here. You should also go and subscribe to uh, Josh's channel by clicking the button right over there to see more of him. You can also go and check out what we do at Unisports Store if you click the subscribe button, the green one over here with me. But the most important button to click is the subscribe button for the Boot Nerds podcast channel. It's right in the middle of your screen. You can't miss it. It's black. It's lovely. You should click it. And then you should also leave a like on the video. Make sure you've rung the bell to get a little notification every time we uh, drop a video. Finally, if you haven't done so already, leave a question in the comment section right down below and we might get an answer out to you in the next episode. And with those famous words, I am J. Mike and I approve this message. Thanks for watching. Okay, here you go. See you later, guys. We say hi, hi.